Your Honour and Commissioners, the next person to speak to their submission are representatives of the YMCA. Mr Mel, would you introduce yourself and your role in the organisation? My name is Ron Mel. I'm the CEO of YMCA Australia. YMCA Australia provides a leadership and support role to YMCAs across the YMCA movement in Australia. Is YMCA Australia responsible for disseminating policies and procedures to the state-based YMCAs? Uh, they're not so much state-based, but to the independent YMCAs. Um, no, independent YMCAs create their own policies, although uh, YMCA Australia does uh, prepare um, national policies and standards, which, once endorsed by the membership of the movement, do become uh, standards and policies which local YMCAs have to comply with. Uh, Ms Whitwell? Um, yes, I'm uh, Jackie Whitwell. I'm the Executive Manager of Social Policy with YMCA Australia. Uh, Mr Mel and Ms Whitwell, can I invite you to speak to your submission? Thank you. The Australian YMCA is part of an international YMCA movement and in Australia comprises 24 YMCAs operating, as I said, independently as independent legal entities. And today we do work with hundreds of thousands of children and young people every day across Australia. Over the past two years, uh, this Royal Commission has highlighted to the YMCA two major areas of introspection and for action. Uh, firstly, we have doubled our ongoing efforts to ensure that every YMCA within Australia offers a safe environment for the children and young people who come for support come to play, come to learn, or come seeking some care. In the context of redress, the YMCA believes that being able to assure survivors that we are doing everything possible to ensure the protection of children now is an important and integral part of the redress process. This has resulted in YMCAs across Australia adopting a new national safeguarding children and young people policy which, amongst other standards which require immediate adoption, will also ensure that all YMCAs engage an external independent expert to accredit and audit our child protection practices. And we continue to influence the movement, or the culture of the movement, to reinforce the concept of extended guardianship to all who work or volunteer within the YMCA. The second area of introspection and action is through addressing those times in the past when children and young people were abused while in YMCA care. In other words, an approach to redress which looks to the past and complements our focus on the present and the future. And the work of the Royal Commission has been invaluable to us in developing this approach for the YMCA movement, and we continue to learn from the Royal Commission and from other agencies. The YMCA has developed an approach to redress, and it's in a draft form, and it has not as yet been endorsed by the YMCA movement. Being a federated structure, we require the endorsement of member YMCAs, and we are proceeding towards this. The basic premise upon which our redress approach is being developed arises from one of our long-held values, which is that we value equality and justice for all people. And such a methodology must place the survivor at the centre of our approach and in what we do. And we therefore support the components of redress as outlined by the Royal Commission in its paper and as it applies to direct personal response access to counselling and psychological care, a monetary payment, and we support the notion of a government being the funder of last resort, and we support a national scheme in which Commonwealth participate with institutions as the primary contributors. 
We acknowledge there are challenges and that the time that might be taken for a national scheme to be agreed and functioning could be some time. And we recognise that we cannot wait for a government response and that we need to build a nationally consistent YMCA approach now. And this view has been reinforced by the Commonwealth's response to the Commission discussion papers. Um, so we'll, we'll now elaborate on some of YMCA's work in building this interim approach and which aligns with the principles that we believe are elaborated in the Royal Commission's discussion paper. Thank you. Um, acknowledging the, uh, the challenges towards um, developing a national redress scheme, um, uh, we would like to say that we support um, the development of a national scheme. However, we know that survivors uh, need understanding, support and recognition today. As such, we've started to turn our attention towards developing an approach to redress for survivors of abuse within the YMCA or by a YMCA employee or volunteer. We would like to note that this approach is still in development and we are working through a process of seeking agreement from all of our YMCAs in this regard. As we've begun to develop our approach to redress, we've looked to our own values and the principles highlighted by the Royal Commission. Through hearing about the experiences of survivors and organisations in previous and existing redress schemes, we've begun to understand what has helped survivors in the past and what has failed. Participating in the private roundtables held by the Commission has been, an inv has been invaluable in building our learning and our knowledge. While not yet formalised, our intended approach to redress will be supported by a number of principles which I'd like to talk through now. Firstly, we know that we need to, our approach to redress must be survivor focused. And for us, this means that the best interests of survivors will be central to what we do, and that the rights and choices of survivors in the process of redress will be supported and respected. We also know that we need to ensure that our approach is transparent, accountable, and subject to independent oversight. It is important that we develop a means by which independent decision-making and oversight of redress can occur. And we know that an independent structure or mechanism that sits outside of the YMCA may provide this. Not only is this important in terms of transparency and accountability, but we also know this will be important for the survivors, for those survivors who do not wish to contact the YMCA directly. We are currently exploring models of how we might implement such a structure or mechanism and whether this might be something that we could do in a cooperative arrangement with other like organisations. We know that we need to have a nationally consistent approach and as already mentioned, as a federated structure, we have many different YMCA's across the country and it will be important that our approach to redress is nationally consistent to ensure that our response is fair and equitable to all survivors regardless of where the abuse may have occurred. We know we need to have a trauma-informed approach to what we do. And for us, this means that those providing a direct response to survivors and those engaged in the provision of redress should, at a minimum, have a foundational level of knowledge and understanding about the impacts of child abuse and also be trained in trauma-informed approaches. We know that we need to ensure that redress is accessible to all survivors, regardless of where they live, what their current circumstances are, their ability, their cultural or language group. And we need to provide clear and easy to understand information about redress and the process. We believe there should be no time limitations on, placed on accessing redress. We know it is important survivors, for survivors to come forward at a time when they feel most comfortable and most able and supported to do so. We believe that applying standards of plausibility and reasonableness when assessing the claims of survivors is the most appropriate way of having a process that is non-adversarial and supportive of survivors. In working through the process of redress, we must do everything that we can to avoid doing any further harm. We also believe that the rights of survivors to pursue civil litigation should be maintained and that survivors should not be subject to confidentiality agreements. In developing our approach to redress within the YMCA, we are doing so as an interim measure. 
and we'll be watching closely as the discussion around the establishment of a national redress scheme progresses. We support the establishment of a national scheme and we would seek to be part of that national scheme as required. In terms of developing our own approach to redress, we know we have some way to go. But we also know that we need to do everything in our power to ensure that survivors are supported today and over the long term. As we further develop our approach to redress within the YMCA, we'll continue to listen to the learnings and recommendations of the Royal Commission and we will listen to the voices of survivors about what they need. Thank you, Ms. McGrath. Thank you. <coughs> um, either of you might like to <coughs> answer this for me. You just heard the Tasmanian Government speak of their um, prime compensation scheme, for want of a better expression. And you probably know they exist in other places. Um, have you given any thought to linking up with those schemes and contributing your portion of the necessary monies to those schemes as a way forward? Mm -hmm. I, th I think we haven't, um, we probably haven't progressed as far down the pathway in our thinking in relation to that. I guess um, just as, a, as an initial concern would be that the other, um, the, the other components of redress that we know to be important for survivors, um, it would be, we, we would need some clarity about how that might sit within an enhanced uh, victims, um, victims of Crime Compensation Scheme. That's certainly true, but do you see any theoretical impediment to at least exploring that as an option with appropriate, as it were, add-ons um, to meet the particular needs of mm. survivors? Mm. I, that's certainly a possibility. I think, I think so. I think the, uh, the, the other aspect to it which uh, the YMCA movement is, is keen about, though, is to ensure that there's a consistency in the approach across Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, but but there, I think there are aspects which could be managed um, um, within a scheme where we link with, with state-based uh, schemes as well. And I gather from your submission that leaving aside linking up with a state-based scheme, you're certainly open to cooperation between institutions. Uh, including the major ones accepting, as it were, a need to provide additional funds where um, there, is a, um, there is an organisation that has no money or doesn't exist. Is that right? Very much so. And, and also there's, a, um, there's a, a business case to do that as well, of course, in terms of you know, whatever scheme there is in place or whatever approach, uh, there's a cost associated with it. And if there is an opportunity to, to link with other agencies, then there's, a, there's an opportunity to, to, um, to um, reduce our costs. Does the YMCA carry insurance in relation to these matters? Um, a, we, we do have a, a national insurance program that has been in place since 2002. Prior to that date, each YMCA would have held its own insurance. Um, as we've um, begun to, to look at this issue more closely, we've come to understand that many of the, um, what we might term historical matters within the YMCA, not exclusively so, but the majority may well be uninsured matters. Um, and so we're proceeding in our discussions around redress on, primarily on that basis. So have you discussed the issue of an appropriate approach going forward with your insurers? Uh, we, well, yes, in terms of um, uh, future claims that might arise as a result of the present and the future, yes. Uh, um, and especially, obviously, ar around coverage and premiums and, and, and the child protection, national child protection policies that we've put in place are certainly supporting those discussions with insurers. But in joining in with other institutions in a redress scheme or cooperating with a state-based one, Commonwealth or state. Mm. Does the insurer's voice have any part to play in your response? Or is it irrelevant? Uh, certainly not at, at this stage, except that uh, the insurers um, are supporting the work that we're doing at the moment, but that's just about mm. as far as it's gone. Yeah. Um, the only other question I want to ask you is, um, you heard Professor Parkinson express concern that by providing redress without a total um, exclusion of the possibility of further litigation, you might be providing funds or seed funds for litigation. 
I, sh I gather it's not a concern that the YMCA hold. Um, no, and and I think we've I think as as Your Honour um, articulated, we, we've not seen any evidence that 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 has happened in the past, and that that might occur. That's not really a concern. I think we are um, looking at this issue and the issue of redress from the point of view that if we, um, as an organisation, um, do the right thing by survivors and have a process that is just and fair, um, then uh, while survivors are, uh, should maintain their rights um, to pursue civil litigation, we hope that through a process of redress that we might be able to provide sufficient support for them to feel that they are they have been listened to and heard and have that support going forward. Are you in a position now to impose upon your independent or local YMCAs any redress scheme that would be developed at your level? Um, not impose. Um, where we are at with our approach to redress is that we've uh, commenced, uh, I guess, an engagement process with, with the movement through, through discussion, uh, and that will be working towards a point where we would be putting to the movement through a, a general meeting a, a national approach to, to redress, uh, at which time, if it's approved by the membership, then it would be something that, that uh, YMCA's would need to be compliant with. So they only need to comply with it if they agree to, through the general meeting process? If, if the general meeting agree to it, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you both. And again, can I, on behalf of the commissioners, express our appreciation for the work which I know both of you have done to help us in our deliberations on these issues. Thank you, thank you Your Honour. <clears throat>